out of their studio once again. It's the Seven Days Live New Zealand Tour and it will be hitting the road early next month. We are joined now by two award-winning comedians, Justine Smith and Jeremy Corbett, who is also the host of the show. It is really great to have you guys here. You're Thank lucky, you. actually, to have Juzzy here. She just about walked out because she hates to ice straights and her fridge is really, really clean. My <laughs> fridge is clean. Yeah. Like, that's ins I don't, there's nothing old in my fridge. Seriously? Yep. What kind of person are you? I'm exactly. I'm <laughs> clean. <laughs> <laughs> Obsessive, some say. A little bit. She says clean. It's like my car. Like People go, get in my car and they go, are you about to sell your car? And I mm. go, no, I'm not. It's very tidy with an air freshener. Really? Yep. If you get into my car, you have to clean about six outfits off the seats no. and maybe some food. On, no, not... on tour, we have to clean out the car before Juzzy will get in. Thank you. And then you have to sit in the seats that she's got assigned for you. And if you're in the <laughs> wrong seats, it's everyone out. Get back in. Paul, you're in the back. Jeremy there, die. Yeah, up the front. It's, it's to height. Mm. So, you know, obviously <laughs> dies in the boot. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd definitely be in the back seat if I was on tour with you. Um, that surprises me about you, Justine. <laughs> I just, you well, just... my theory is untidy mind, tidy house. Ah, so nice. there's a lot going on up here, so I have to like be tidy. Be organised. I've always been like that. I've always nice. been tidy. Well, I'm impressed. Yeah, well, you guys going on tour. I love the show Seven Days. I was watching the other night, Justine, and you, you give politicians a bit of a hard time. Is that part of the fun? That is a lot of the fun. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm there for, you know, to do that. Do you worry sometimes? No. You never worry. No. Oh, I do. A little Jeremy bit. Worries. Do you? Yeah, Jeremy oh, worries. there's well you wouldn't have seen it on TV. There's one time David Seymour. He brings it on himself. Brings it on the himself. The David Seymour episode was special. The, there was yeah, uh, and, and there's kind of seven onto one. And it went on for quite a while because we record more than you actually see on TV. Yeah. It did feel a, a little bit like we'd bullied him by the end of it. Mm. Um, but he did, he asked for it, <laughs> but that doesn't make it right. Apparently when he walked off, he was panting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the make it, he was going... <gasps> we could make out. a guest pant, and I think you've done something <laughs> pretty job spectacular. Done. <laughs> job done. Um, so you're doing this, Jeremy, obviously the host yes. of Seven Days. I'm mm. on the project now as well. Correct. How's that all going? Really good. Um, on Seven Days, I'm like the dad, yeah. so I have to keep everyone under control. Exactly. But on the project, I'm like the very old child <laughs> and it's all care no responsibility you know Jesse and Kano run the ship and I can just have fun. Is that freeing? Is that quite Oh nice? yes absolutely and there's an amazing team that does all the work behind the scenes I just turn up and take the glory boom. The first few times though did you try and rein it in thinking because you're still in that sort of hosting role and? Uh, no you just, well you know what it's like when you get in front of a different audience different studio you behave differently yeah. so you, yeah just a different different hat I put on I guess. And, you know, quite often you get to say things on seven days that the public are thinking but not necessarily <laughs> wanting to say out loud. You've got a brilliant platform to do that. Have you ever been in legal trouble? <laughs> no, there's a team of lawyers at seven days who check everything oh, oh, yeah, nice. before it goes out. Oh, and, nice. you know, there's been a few edits. <laughs> yeah, the, the, you, you, and you only get in trouble or fined when someone complains, right? Right. And then that, that's um, the, they uphold the complaint. I mm. think that has happened once, but we don't get a lot of complaints, and I think that's because of the expectation. You know, people go, this is going to be a show that I will find offensive, and we give that warning at the top of the show. Every, mm -hmm. yeah. every time. So I guess, you know, the expectation is that that's going to happen, so it's, it, we don't get that many complaints. At some stage, though, you're going to have Beryl from Down Country, and she's mm -hmm. going to be watching it, thinking she's seeing a news show or something, <laughs> and she's going to be horrified. And she'll be right again. By the time we're on, Beryl's in bed. <laughs> she's had a couple of shandies and she's she's and got a curl. Yeah. The funniest one is when Paul ego because Paul's brain goes straight to his mouth. It doesn't go through the check <laughs> yes, this out the before filter. I throw it out there filter. And sometimes he'll say something. It's usually about his wife, and he realises he overstepped the mark, and he'll do the whole, you know, don't put that in the yeah. show. And uh, there was one time they put it in. <laughs> <laughs> with no. him doing that. <laughs> yeah, with that and everything, yeah. Because I reckon there'll be a lot of cast members in that show that lie in bed thinking, oh no, what did I say last oh, night? It's going to be on I the telly. Sometimes I do do that, but you just have to learn to back yourself. Sometimes I'm like, ooh, was that too much? But, you know, and that's up to the editors too to decide yeah. and the producers. And, and they're amazing. They yeah. always save us. They're incredible. Yeah. But you want too much as opposed to too little. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> as a viewer, that's I'll quote you yeah. on that next, yeah. time, <laughs> next time I'm in yeah. trouble. Yeah. No, but so, yeah. that's the beauty about taking the show on the road though, isn't it? Because what we see on TV necessarily isn't everything that goes on, so no. they get the unfiltered, unedited That's version. Right. That's mm. raw. And um, also the cool thing about the tour is that the first half is stand-up, so it's all of us doing seven minutes of little bits of stand-up, and then there's a break, and then we get into the, the panel show side of it. So it, it's, it's somewhat of a drawback, actually, because seven good, great comedians doing seven minutes each makes
makes a really good compact stand-up show. Yeah. So most people like that more than the second <laughs> <That's laughs> show. Actually, that is okay, I'll go at half time. I've yeah. had my fun. Actually, we're going to get your best stuff too from Seven Minutes. I agree. It's mm. like a little smorgasbord of yeah. comedians. It's yeah. great. Um, what do you reckon is the hardest thing that you've ever done for comedy, Justine? Uh, the first gig. Ooh. Yeah. Probably. I, I mean, I've done some stupid stuff in my life and been, you know, bungee jumped and all that stuff. But my first gig, I've never been as frightened. And, and, and you know, as horrifically frightened as I was. But, what was your first gig and how did uh, it come about? It was back in Kitty O'Brien's before the uh, comedy club started and uh, it was a deer because I was a waitress with a smart mouth <laughs> and um, someone suggested that I should do, I should do stand up and I, you know, I, I did it and it was cheesy but it was life changing. Yeah, and found the thing. And obviously worked for you too. Mm. Yeah. And you were in computers, weren't you? That's right. I mean, that's obviously, <laughs> obviously She's transition. laughing because you brought it up and that's what they tease me about constantly yeah. on tour. He's a nerd. Can you Sorry. fix my laptop? Well, how's it? I mean, that's a transition to comedy, isn't it? Uh, well, weirdly not, because in the early days of computing, like when I was at university, and we did the capping review, which was, you know, sort of mm. sketches of comedy. Most of the people that did that were for the, from the computing department because they were all like the nerds that quoted right. Monty Python and stuff. <laughs> and they, they were the comedians, whereas the art students who mm. should be doing that were busy with other things, poetry acting and, and acting. Drama. Mm. stuff, yeah. yeah. Wow, so, yeah, it's, it's kind of a natural pr progression. Weird thing is, when I was in computing, I wanted to be stupid, and now I'm paid to be stupid. I kind of like getting into the computers. <laughs> Excel spreadsheet? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with a good Excel spreadsheet. Oh, sorry, yeah. I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, carry on. Yeah. Um, how did you get started in, in um, comedy? Well, kind of with those capping reviews at university, right. yeah, with my brother and various other people, including like John Bridges, who now produces the project. Um, yeah, that, so that's where we sort of started and uh, went from there into um, sort of the comedy clubs and progressed sort of in parallel with radio and all that sort of stuff and yeah. Awesome. And now we get to see you on the road. Who else is on this tour? Uh, we've got the uh, the normal front row which is myself, uh, Paul and Di, then we've got Josh Thompson, Ben Hurley, Jeremy Elwood and Juzzy Smith. Yeah. Do you have a favourite person that you're like a team leader? I know you're going to say. <laughs> Oh, you mean, to, sorry, on the show or yeah. on the tour? Oh, like, oh, or either. What? Who was I going to say? You know, if, if I said who's the funniest on the tour? Paul Ego. Yep, yeah, boom. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Paul is one of those guys that if you sit next to him like a party or something and his commentary is just gold. There's no off button. No, there's no off button. <laughs> and he seems like such a nice, clean-cut man from Devonport. He is he's not quite a dirty man. <laughs> um, which I find really hilarious. Like, he's just, I think he's, he yeah. Is. I always say Paul for who's the most Very favorite. quick. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's going to be a great tour. We love seeing Can't it. I wait. love Seven Days too, one of my favourite shows. One yeah. of my favourite segments is Caption That. And I've got a photo here of Mel. I don't oh. know if we can see this. <laughs> here we and go. I would, uh, I'd like you to caption oh, this. Caption this. Tap, tap, tap. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I'd go I with that, say, firstly. Uh, news anchor in natural habitat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I love it. Yes, yeah, that's Mel probably right. Anyway, just a nice. quiet Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Mel, right. Mel with her work all lined up on the desk in front of her. There we go. <laughs> Put it all together and make a rosé. <laughs> oh, awesome. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Thanks. Seven Days Live New Zealand Tour kicks off on Wednesday, the 5th of December in Auckland. And they're heading all around the country. So make sure that you check out the 3Now website or the 7 Days Facebook page for all the details. Yeah, it is a perfect night out.